In a previous video on this channel, I've talked about the complement system with its three pathways. The classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway. Today we have an introduction about the types of hypersensitivity reactions. We have type 1, type 2, type 3, and guess what? Type 4 hypersensitivity. And this classification is based on what, medicosis? It's based on the time, mainly. Type 1 is the fastest, type 4 is the most delayed. With that said, now let's get started. Hypersensitivity, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. Type 1, immediate, but type 4 is delayed. Okay, how about type 2? Cytotoxic, look at this. Type 2 is cytotoxic. And type 3, you have free antibodies. What do you mean by free? I mean the antibodies are floating in the plasma. They are floating in your blood. They are not bound to cells. They are not cyto like type 1. Also, you can describe type 3 by three words. Serum immune complexes. Hypersensitivity. Which one is the fastest? Type 1. Which one is the slowest? Type 4. Can you describe type 1 in few words? Sure. Immediate anaphylactic IgE, mast cells, they rupture, pew, they degranulate, pew, releasing histamine. And histamine can give you the symptoms of an anaphylactic shock. How about type 2? Psi 2 toxic. What do you mean? I mean, I have antibodies, okay, these antibodies are bound to antigens, okay, and this happens on the surface of the cell. The cell is the Psi 2, that's why type 2 is Psi 2 toxic. Okay, how about type 3? Three? 3 is free. You have antigens and antibody complexes. Same as 2? Yeah, but with one difference. The big difference is this happens in the blood. And after this, since they are hanging around in the blood, the antigen-antibody complex can end up being deposited in the blood, causing vasculitis, in your joints, causing arthritis, in your kidney, causing nephritis, etc, etc, etc. In type 1, type 2, type 3, we talked about antibodies like IgE, like the antibody that is cytotoxic, like the antibody that's freely floating in the blood. But type 4 has nothing to do with antibodies. Type 4 has nothing to do with the humoral immune system. Type 4 is about T lymphocytes, cell-mediated immunity. No antibodies? Heck no. The T lymphocytes are super sophisticated. They communicate with each other via cytokines, which include the interleukins, which is the internet of the leukocytes. This is also the story of making a granuloma, and this takes time. Here is a quick overview of the four types of hypersensitivity. Type 1, immediate, okay, within minutes, all right? Hemoral immunity, which means I'll see antibodies, yes, such as IgE. Immediate, hemoral, preformed antibodies. Remember, IgE is ew. What do you mean by ew? Allergy, anaphylaxis, atopy, asthma, eosinophil, ew, bee sting, ew. How about type 2? Type 2 is cytotoxic. Okay. We have an antigen antibody complex. We're on the surface of the cell. And these antibodies could inhibit the target most of the time, or they could stimulate the target in one case only. That's why some crazy textbooks define this specific type as type 5 hypersensitivity. But this is a very bizarre classification that only lasted for five minutes, and then they went back to classifying hypersensitivity as four types. Can they inhibit the target? Sure, they can cause inflammation and cell dysfunction. Inflammation is seen in anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody disease, also known as good pasture syndrome, rheumatic fever, hyperacute transplant rejection. This is how your body rejects organs. Or they can cause cell dysfunction such as myasthenia gravis and pemphigus vulgaris. My muscles are in trouble, my skin is toast. They stimulate the target organ only in one case, which is the case of grave disease. I have antibodies against the receptor. Okay, what kind of receptor? This is the receptor waiting for the TSH. So it's called the TSH receptor. Okay, but these antibodies will come and stimulate the target. Have you ever heard of antibodies? that stimulate the target? No, antibodies are weapons of destruction. Now this is an exception. These are antibodies that stimulate the target. Leading to what? Well, it's as if TSH is binding to its receptor. Oh, so a similar effect? Yeah. What does TSH do? 
it tells the thyroid gland to secrete tons of thyroid hormone. So Graves' disease, in a sense, is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, how about type 3? Type 3 is also antigen-antibody complex in a different location, floating freely in the plasma. Okay, this is the cause of serum sickness, which is a diffuse and acute reaction, or the Arthas reaction. It's not diffuse, it's very localized in one spot on your skin. And it's not that acute, Arthas is subacute. Serum sickness is generalized, Arthas is localized. Serum sickness is acute, Arthas is subacute and subcutaneous. Love it, subacute, subcutaneous. Type 3 is also the tragic story of the nasty immune mediated vasculitis when these antigen antibody get deposited into the wall of the vessel this is vasculitis they can also get stuck into your kidney this is called immune complex mediated nephritis or into your joints immune complex arthritis this is what happens in lupus this is what happens in rheumatoid arthritis and gazillion other diseases about type 4? Type 4 is the most delayed, 3 days, or about 72 hours, or slightly less, slightly more. This is cell-mediated. I'm not gonna send antibodies to destroy, no. I, myself, I'm gonna go and kill that bacteria face-to-face. -face. I'm gonna have a strong word with this tuberculosis face-to-face, cell-to-cell, cell-mediated or cellular immunity. If I can kill the stupid invader, I will destroy it. How will you destroy it? Well, we are T-lymphocytes. We have T-cytotoxic cells. We kill. Okay. But if I can't kill it, well, at least I can surround it in a granuloma. This granuloma can have caseous necrosis, such as the caseating granuloma of tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis, or it could be non-caseating, basically any other granuloma is going to be non-caseating. A famous example is sarcoidosis. How to make a granuloma is a story that we'll talk about soon, but basically CD4 T lymphocytes will secrete interferon gamma, which will stimulate the macrophages to make the granuloma. Brace yourself for the next video because we will discuss type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, the story of the asthma, the atopy, the bee sting, first exposure, second exposure, early response versus late response, and much more. If you like this video, you will adore my renal physiology course available at medicosisperfectionaries.com. Comes with 10 videos, 10 cases with notes, of course. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course, learn everything you need to know about insulin, the different types of insulin, how to calculate the dose of insulin, and much more. And for a limited time, get a 60% discount towards everything on my website just by using promo code New Year Learning at checkout. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button, you can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.